Hey guys, welcome back to Bait and Tackle. And today's episode is going to be pretty cool. I have bought and purchased some custom jig molds from a buddy of mine, and they're both pretty much a good representation of a brush jig. And they're two different styles. And these are done in a do it mold blank. So they were custom made from a different company, and I'm not sure what company he got them from. But anyway, so these ones are pretty awesome. They come in a couple different sizes. You've got 3 8 half, 5 8 and 3 quarters on this mold. And what you do with this mold is you use the Teflon pins. If you take these and cut them in half, they fit right snug into the mold perfectly. So then that way you can do your your uh, weed guard after the fact. So same thing for both molds. That that one is that one, which ends up looking like this. I don't know if you can see that very well. It ends up looking like that. And it's it's a really cool mold. Now this one I did with some Bama Craw and some red bug on the bottom for just an added effect. So I thought that was kind of cool. And then the other one, this mold, this I really like this one. This one's really my favorite. Another brush jig, jig, same idea. Um, it is also 3 8 half, uh, 5 8 and 3 quarter. This one will accept 3 aught and 4 aught. The other one will only accept a 4 aught hook. And these are both use the Must Add 32786. So you probably could find the Gamagatsu hook if you wanted to. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you these cool molds. They're awesome. Uh, like I said, they're customs. These are very expensive compared to any of the other do-it molds that you'd purchase that you know already pre-made. What we're going to do is we're going to make up a couple of each jig type, and we're just going to paint like two or three or four of them just to show you what they look like. And I'll probably do the same colors that I did here. And this is that this is that second one that I just did. Um, let me just get it in here so you can see it. And what I did was I did like a pinkish purple and then a darker purple on the bottom, and it kind of fades in. So, very cool color, very cool jig head. I am going to go ahead and make up a couple of these. I got the lead hot, and I'm gonna show you these a little bit more in detail. What we'll do is we'll, like I said, we'll do, a, I'm gonna do a couple of different pours, and I'll probably do some off camera just so I've got a, little, a couple sitting on the side here, not painted, but we'll paint like four of them just so that you guys can see what the size, and we'll do uh, different sizes. I think we'll do three eighths and a half ounce. That's what usually I use and other people use around this area too. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna place a couple of these Teflon pins into a couple of these cavities. Now some of these might be a little bit too long. I think I may have to trim some of these down and some of these are actually kind of perfect. I think I'm gonna have to trim some of these down, but we're gonna, we're gonna find out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the 4 aught and the, this one actually, you can only use 4 aught. That's the one that's got the rounded band, not the steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. And actually, the Teflon pin fits pretty good. a little bit trimmed off and I'm just going to take a little pair of side cutters here flush cutters just trim a little bit off and then we'll leave that there and then we'll try the other one takes a three out so I'm going to make the three eighths a three out and I know I'm gonna to have to trim these down and I've already done just a couple of these just to try it now he did use some 
I need to get the four. Or is that the four? I think I did it backwards. Yeah, did it backwards. Okay, so you get three. There we go. Okay, so I've got to cut these Teflons down a little bit. Now, one thing I was going to say was he uses some kind of dropout like this. This is Franklin Frankfurt Arsenal dropout. And what he did was he coated the insides of these molds with a little bit of this. And, and I got to be honest, I don't like using things on my molds, but this dropout stuff works fantastic. So if I'm having issues with filling in the uh, bait keepers and stuff like that, I just go ahead and use some of this. And there is a shake this up real good and I'm just gonna go ahead and give it just a little spray there little spray there and on both sides okay and then we're gonna do the same thing with this other mold and this stuff actually is pretty good because it can clean up pretty easy so I don't mind using this, but the important thing is you gotta let it, let it dry. Now we can go ahead and put in our, our hooks. So again, this one's the one that takes the three out. I think that was the three out. No, actually that was a four out. It'll take three or four. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a three out in that one. These ones only take fours according to the nameplate data okay so now we're going to go ahead and put in the teflon pins like i said some of these are a little long so i'm probably going to have to trim down these two especially for this type of jig actually that cut a little bit too short probably i know this one i know is definitely too long we're going to go ahead and pop off the end of that too. There we go. Okay, so nice and tight in there. We're ready to go. My lead's hot. I'm going to go ahead and bring you over here. We're going to go ahead and try to pour these real quick. I'm going to keep you right there. Okay, that one's good. My lead pot leaks a little bit. And I found that if I turn the screw here, it doesn't leak anymore. So I just got to keep a screwdriver close by. So those are those two. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to close up the other mold. Make sure it's tight. It is tight. And we're going to go ahead and pour those as well. Okay. So those are good. So I'm going to bring you back over here. We're going to take these out of the molds. Voila, perfect. Bait keepers got filled in all the way. Heads look great. That's what the dropout works really well for. So in all my previous videos, I was having some issues with the bait keepers not filling in correctly. And that one came out perfect too. So we're gonna go ahead, like I said, off camera, I'm gonna make up a couple more of these each, two more each. And we'll come right back and we'll start cleaning these up. I'll show you how to clean them up and then we'll paint them. All right, so we did two more all set. Those came out perfect. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to clip off with flush cutters, clipping off the lead, the extra lead that was left over. And you want to cut this as close as you possibly can to the jig. Then that way there's minimal, minimal sanding. So there's a little spot right there that we're gonna have to sand with a little file. Same thing with this, this is the same type. So I'm just gonna go ahead, clip them, same spot. It's the same idea for those. And then the extra lead you can put right back over in your lead pot. And again, if you're not too sure with this lead stuff, 
you need to be careful and wear gloves if you want to. I have a very nice um, ventilation system set up so that none of the fumes are in here with me. They all go right outside. So this one has a bigger head on the top. So it's going to be a bigger... Ooh, that does not want to cut. I don't know why that doesn't want to cut. I have to. There it goes. Okay. So there's a bigger piece on there that we're going to have to sand down. It's not so huge, but we just need to make it flush. And the paint will take care of filling in the gaps. So let me just go ahead and clip off the rest of these. And then we can get to making our jigs. Okay, so got all four of those, all four of those. And again, I'm not gonna do all four of these, but I'm just gonna go ahead and sand them, uh, file them down so that they're ready to go for the next time. And I've, I've got a little box of unfinished jigs that I do. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little this little pot that I've got, and that's what catches my lead. And I'm gonna take this file, a little triangular file, and I'm just gonna go ahead and clean these up. This one's got the biggest spot area to do. So I'm just gonna hit these real good. And we leave the Teflon pieces in the jigs for when we paint, and that way paint doesn't get in the weed guard holes. That one's pretty good. And again, you're filing lead. So this is soft lead and it'll get into your skin. So just make sure you wash your hands appropriately. And sometimes, I mean, you probably should wear gloves. I don't, but that's just a chance that I'm taking myself. So, got all those filed down. These ones are even easier, it's just one little spot. And I like that mold because of that right there. But as far as looks go, I think I like the step up one better. Just as far as how the jig looks. No eyeballs on any of these, so these are going to be a lot easier to make. And that's it. So put that back over there. Now I'm going to sort these out and we'll start painting. All right, so we're going to turn the heat gun on. We're going to bring our pink over here. We're going to do that one first. They call it purple. They call it purple, I call it pink. So what we're going to do is we're going to do one of each. Uh, the last one I did was a big one, so I'm going to go ahead and do a small one of the purple and pink. And then I'll do the, another, the other, let's see, that's a big one as well, so I'll do that one as the other one. So I'll do these two as purple and pink, and then these two I'm going to do with the Bama Craw. So let me go ahead and get the bubbler going. You might see this pink get a little crazy. Yep, there it goes. Little fountain. Okay, she's ready to go. So like I said, I'm gonna do the little one of these. And let me get you adjusted here so you can see the tip of the heat gun. I have an old heat gun. It gets pretty dang hot. You make sure those Teflon pins stay in place. And all we're doing here is just getting that good and going, getting that good and hot for the paint to stick on. And some people count down the seconds. I don't really do that. I just, I mean, it's hot. So I'm going to go ahead and dip it in. 
it go it, it does coat the entire head including the Teflon pin so cleaning the Teflon pin is going to be a little bit more difficult but it's not bad so I'm going to return it to the heat get a little bit more heat on it and then what I did was I took some of this purple they call it purple and mixed it with some blue and I got this like purplish blue color and all I do is take a little paintbrush and I take some of that heat the top head, heat the top part of the head. Then what I do is take this, and sprinkle it on top. Sprinkle it on top of the jig head and trying to get a little bit more paint or a little bit more paint there. And then I like to come down the side just a little bit just to give it a cool effect so then I take it back to the heat heat that up make sure that paint gets in there melts good and then you have a jig head that the lighting is kind of crappy but there you go see the pink into the purple Same thing on that side. Very cool. So we're gonna go ahead and take that off. Put that, actually we gotta take the Teflon pin out. Don't forget the Teflon pin. Take it out, turn it to the heat to get a, get a little burrs off there. And then she's ready to cook. So we're gonna do the same thing with this guy. Heat it up. Heat it up real good, nice and hot. Make sure your Teflon pins in there good. And dip it into paint. Oh, I actually didn't get all the way down on the thing, so I just did. Hopefully this doesn't drip on me. Oh, and I missed a little tiny bit. the bait keeper and just tap a little bit extra paint on there blends right in okay so there's that may have gotten a little bit too much paint on there we'll find out later but again let's heat up the bottom take some purple a little bit on the sides on the edges Same thing on this side. Turn it to the heat. Let that purple blend right in. And there you have it. Pink to purple. Take the wheat guard out. Turn it to the heat just so you get a little bit of burring off of there. The eyes are clear, the hook eye is clear. Then we're going to go ahead and do our next ones. But our next one, our next one, I'm going to put the cup cap back on this one. We're done with the purple. Our next one. Bama Craw. So let's go ahead and get the red bug out of there if I can. There we go. And get the Bama Craw put into the cup here. So again, same thing. Got my fluid bed here. Go ahead and turn it on. Make sure my hose is clear. I can see it fluiding up. See it bubbling there. So we're good. I'm going to go ahead. 
get these jig heads dipped. And then we'll work on the, the bottom color, which is going to be red bug instead of that purple. So I'll get this nice and hot. And then dip it in. Oh, I actually did Magic Craw on accident. But that's a really cool color, so we'll stick with it. We will actually take the Magic Craw. That's a cool color. I actually messed that up. I didn't didn't do the Bama. I'm going to go ahead and, and stick with this, I guess. And I'm going to go ahead and see how this actually looks. We'll experiment a little bit. I was going to take some of this, actually. Eh, purple could look pretty cool. Because it's got some blue in it. But let's go ahead and do some of this red. Let's experiment a little bit. Just heat up the top. And I think all I did was just kind of gave it a little bit of a red effect. The unfortunate thing about this red is you got to put a fair amount of it on to get it to show up. But I think we're on to something here. It's almost like a bloody magic crawl. So there's the red bug, which has got a little bit of flake in it, and then it kind of follows into the. Yeah, it's really cool. I'll try to take some pictures of it, it might show up better. Um, with some simple pictures of it. But I think we'll just continue doing that. That's actually really cool. It came out really cool. I like it. So, again, take the Teflon out. And we're going to go ahead and heat this last one up. Do the same thing. And I think I like that better, actually, than the Bama Craw. Now, the red's a little bit more predominant on the Bama Craw because it's a light color. But this Magic Craw is pretty cool. So I think that darkness and then the red kind of with it makes it really neat. So that came out really cool. Magic Craw. And it's like a, a green pumpkin blue. So I'm going to go ahead and shut that off because we don't need that anymore. Get that out of the way. Unplug the bubbler. I'm going to go ahead and get some of this red on here. Trying to go ahead and make it pretty cool here. It's kind of neat. I like this. I like this color combo. See what that looks like. Oh yeah, that came out cool. So it's again the magic craw. And I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll get some better pictures of these. This one's really dark, so it's hard hard to see it. But I'll, I'll get it with some white paper in the background or something. But came out sweet. Looks really good. Don't forget to take your Teflon pin out. Put it on here. As always, we come over here, get our toaster oven fired up, put these in, bake for 20 minutes. Now we set a timer. All right, so they are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and do here, excuse my hot glove. Grab these. We're going to throw another glove down on the table so it doesn't burn. And we're going to check them out. 
So let's see here. The eyes look clear, and that's all we're really concerned about. And the one where I had a little bit too much paint on that I thought was going to be a problem actually came out really good. So, very cool. And the Magic Craw with the red. Oh man, it blended in so well. The red blends in to the to the green on the bottom so well. It's just like it's like it's meant to be. Very cool. Very very cool. So we're gonna let those cool down. Then we're going to come back and put weed guards on them. And then we're gonna wrap this video up. We're not gonna do skirts this time. We're probably gonna do skirts at another time. All right. So these have cooled down, and I wanted to just show you guys what we came out with. So and this is kind of the best lighting that I could find in the shop that, that is going to be feasible enough. But you can see how the blue craw is that green pumpkin, but it's got that blue shimmer when I get it in the light. See it? <clears throat> and then when I roll it, you can see the red with the other flake inside of it. So it's kind of cool. Like right there, see the red on the gills right there kind of thing? Like right there. So pretty cool. So that came out really good. I'm going to try to get some pictures of those if I can. Uh, we will go ahead and put the weed guards on. We'll glue the weed guards in so I can show you those. And then this pink to purple, or they call it purple, but uh, I like it. I think it's pink to dark purple. But that came out amazing. That dark purple on the bottom, and then how it comes up on the sides just a little bit, just kind of as a splatter almost. So can't wait to actually make some some skirts for those. So I'll probably do a separate video for the skirts just to keep the time down on this on these on this build here so but there you have it i did two and two two of the magic craw with the red on the bottom the red bug and two of the pink with the purple all right so doing the weed guard is pretty simple I take a little bit of super glue use loctite gel super glue go ahead and put like a drop or two into the cavity Take a black weed guard or whatever color you want to use and you simply push it into the into the hole. That's it. Now some of them I've noticed fit a little harder than others, but these ones fit nice and snug in there. So I'm really I really am impressed by the way this mold was made and how they machined that aluminum. So kudos to the guy that actually made these i'm not sure who it was i'll have to find out from the guy that i bought them from i think he may have told me i'll have to look back but there you have it this one stands up this one lays down so both really awesome heads are both like wedge heads like i said they're they're both like a, a a brush jig except one of them uh lays down and one of them stands up so I'd say the one that stands up is more like a brush jig to me, like the do-it brush jig, which I actually have that mold. And it's actually one of, I guess, one of my favorites. I use it quite a bit. I haven't used it in a while, but that is one of my favorites. And uh, these kind of remind me of a casting jig a little bit. So I guess I guess it's prob it probably is just two different styles of heads. Now... The shape of the head itself is more of a triangu triangular type shape. So, honestly, I kind of think that they're both more of a brush jig. But the way that they lay, like this one lays back. This one's more of a casting jig almost, just with no eyes. And then the other ones, these actually stand up. So they're more of a brush jig. But pretty cool. Awesome molds. I'm very impressed. I do like I do like these a lot. Like I said, the the style fantastic. The way they did the Teflon pins in there, so I don't have to use the metal pins at all. That's fantastic. I like that idea. I've tried to use Teflon pins in the other molds with the um, to replace the metal, and sometimes they slide out of out of the place, and it, they just don't work as well. That's why they have those pin heads on them. All right, well that's gonna wrap it up. Like I said. This is a, it's been a pretty good, pretty cool little venture with these new jigs. I really enjoy them. The, the colors that I came out with came out really good. 
this one was by accident and came out awesome and i kind of like that with our with my videos is that i kind of experiment through the videos so we're gonna we're gonna make mistakes and we're gonna have fun with it i really don't care but hopefully you guys can learn how to do the process the process doesn't really change that stays the same but i think in previous videos that i've done jig heads in i have definitely liked this um this dropout by Frankfurt Arsenal. That stuff works fantastic. I've had it for a long time. I just never really used it. So kudos to them. That's great for spraying in your molds. It cleans up easy. I did I did clean it up with just like a, a little plastic brush, so you're not hurting your molds. Wiped it out with some um, wiped it out with some paper towels. You could probably even use like some. I don't know some alcohol or something like that so you're not hurting the molds just to clean it out real good but it, but it works real well so next video we'll probably try to come up with some kind of a skirt for this color and for the magic craw with the red bug on the bottom we'll try to come up with a skirt color pattern for those and maybe even eh, now we'll probably leave that one out but i have one over here with that bama bama craw that we were going to try but that's all right we're just going to do these two so we'll make up some jig skirts for those in the next video try to keep the video shorter i've been i have a tendency of making my videos really long especially the jig videos so thank you guys so much for watching we're on the way to 1000 subscribers i can't wait hopefully we can get to it by the end of the year i'd love to but thank you guys again so much for watching and remember keep on baiting